Right. I'm going to just, okay, you know what? You knew what you were getting yourself into when you entered into this episode of a very popular web show, or not so popular, on my YouTube channel, which you all know very, very well. I shit on liberals because they are exactly as they are described here. This one word, which so many people are offended by, retarded. Retarded is one of the most offensive words to use in any lexicon of any language. Retarded is the ugliest profane word in the English dictionary, but as retarded as it sounds, retarded is also the perfect definitive analogy of what society has become. Nothing more than a bunch of sheep who refuse to think for themselves and who just don't deserve to exist in general. And I don't like to say that, and I know that you don't like to hear that, but I don't like it any more than you do, but that doesn't make it any less true. Now, does it? Retarded is an adjective. Dated and important. It has many definitions. According to Google, retarded is an adjective with the definition less advanced in mental, physical, or social development than is usual for one's age, i.e. Caillou at 22, which I think sums up many of you people who voted Democrat in 2016 and 2008, which includes many of you people who voted for George H.W. Bush, for Bill Clinton, for George W. Bush, you know, those kinds of people, right? And, and how the hell do I explain this without pissing anybody off? Because of course you're going to get pissed off by this. Why would you not be pissed off by this? Okay. It is also defined, according to Google, as very foolish or stupid. In retrospect, it was a totally retarded idea. That's an example of a sentence depicting said word, or revolving around said word. The definition of retardation. An act or instance of retarding the extent to which something or someone is retarded. A musical suspension, specifically one that resolves upward. An abnormal slowness or thought of action, especially mental or selective retardation, the latter of which too many in our world suffer from, including, mind you, including the people that we were foolish enough to elect. Slowness in development or progress, which I think sums up the 200-year-old history, or lack thereof, of democracy as a whole. Now listen. Now, if you're looking for a more brutally honest definition of the word, look no further than Urban Dictionary, which quite frankly is a site that I use to gain knowledge of the state, or lack thereof, of what remains of this human race, because there's not much of the left that remains. According to Urban Dictionary, from users Salve Coagula and TBB, respectively, whose definitions were posted November the 11th, 2015, and August the 5th of 2005, respectively, see, some of you people weren't alive when, when Urban Dictionary was found. So that says a lot. According to Solve Coagula, retarded is a word used to describe someone who is profoundly stupid. A type of stupidity that is an insult to intelligence itself. 
politically correct people, aka Democrats, aka fascists, aka liberals, aka leftists in general, would like you to be rude to someone in a less offensive way, perhaps by calling them dumb instead, which ignores the fact that dumb, idiot, and many other similarly used insults used today were all old-timey technical terms for retards. And it also ignores the fact that any word used to describe someone of below average ability in any area whatsoever is an insult to someone with average ability or higher in that area. Solveig Coagula gives a few examples. Example number one, this party is retarded. Example number two, by the way, example number one best sums up the Democrats as a whole. Example number two, dude, you can't say that anymore. You have to say the party it's lame or it's dumb or something else. Well, why can't you call it retarded? Are you allowed to call it democratic? Because if that's the only substitute for retarded, then I'd like to go with that. Democratic. Example number three. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. You just to show to people who cannot walk and people who cannot talk. Well, if that doesn't sum it up, right? Alright. User TBB on Urban Dictionary, August the 5th, 2005, defines retarded as meaning very stupid, but in a more hilarious, weird, and or spontaneous way. From the Latin word for slow... If you want to tick off a politically correct person, just say it. Or in the case of Nike, just do it by hiring a dumbass like Colin Kaepernick, who defiled an entire nation of patriots by kneeling during the anthem when he knew it was bullshit for a cause that didn't exist. Unlike Tim Tebow, who actually kneeled during the anthem to pay tribute to the soldiers who died on the battlefield over the decades and centuries. Continuing TVB's definition. They think it's mean because people with mental problems are not always stupid. Except you can't call those people retarded in the first place, and nobody cares anyway. Plus, once again, it is from the Latin word for slow. I'll give you a couple of examples. Actually, now that I think about it, hell, I was wrong. This particular definition is from user Morshu. 34, 57, 63, 4, 56, 2, 55, 55, 55, 5. Dated October 20th, 2014. Aren't you glad I correct myself so quickly? But I'll give you a couple examples. Guy number one is dancing very strangely. Guy number two to guy number three. Look at guy number one dancing like a retarded. Hashtag stupid, hashtag dumb, hashtag random, hashtag idiotic, hashtag weird. And again, that particular definition, unlike the one below, which I mistaken as being the same person who came up with the definition above, is not the same person who came up with the definition above, but is also the person who came up with the definition below. Namely, the one by TBD dated August the 5th, 2005. And speaking of which, TBB's definition is pretty straightforward. There are literally a thousand different definitions and uses 
for the slang version of retarded. With note, usage-wise, it came before and set the precedence of the way we use day, day in slang today. Used correctly, they're practically interchangeable. Now, how in the hell do you not explain something like that to such a damning degree? The answer, you can't. And as I've stated before, and I'm going to tell you very, very bluntly, and you're not going to like it to hear this, and I'm not going to like it because I'm telling you this, so keep in mind, I don't like it any more than you do, but it needs to be said, because at the end of the day, many of you people in my age group, the millennial age group, should have never been born in the first place because of the simple fact that due to your non-existent logic and your unprecedented lack of common sense and understanding of anything, you are exactly as this particular word describes you, retarded. And like I said, it does not only apply exclusively to people in group homes or assisted living environments. This applies to the people you elect, as well as the people who vote for the people that they elect themselves, as well as those who are politically correct, as well as those who put politics over themselves and everyone else and everything else. Especially those who move into their parents' basements while running for a fourth term in Congress, like, like people like Michael Garrett, for example. People like that should have never been born in the first place. See, this is why we have abortion clinics. Because if somehow you are fortunate enough to make the mistake of being a Democrat, conceives with another Democrat of equal or significantly increased stupidity, you should not be allowed to give birth to that person. And I know, I know you're probably going to get pissed off when you say that, but at the end of the day, guess what? You're guilty of being offended just as much as anything else because sometimes and now more than ever before in history in order to accept the truth for what it is which is exactly the truth you have to be offended by it first and then the more you expose yourself to it the more it becomes clearer in your mind that that is in fact the truth and not what you think of the truth to be. Do you understand, people? Do I have to put it any other way? Is it necessary at this point, at this time, for me to put it any other way? You know what you're getting yourselves into when you call a Republican retarded. You open up a can of whoop-ass that is bottomless and has no end, and that is coming straight for you! That's right. Because there were 66 million people who voted for the least qualified candidate of any presidency in any country in human history in the form of Hillary Clinton, I know you feminists are going to get pissed off when I say that, but I'm just as pissed off in having to point that out because I share the same anger as you, except you misdirect that anger towards me 
when you should be misdirecting that anger towards the one person who deserves the ire more than anyone else, the same person that you voted for, Hillary Rodham, who by the way, is one of the most retarded people to ever walk the face of the earth, despite having a massive intelligence quotient. Barack Obama is even more retarded. And you dumbasses were stupid enough to vote for him in 2008. 69 and a half million of you. By the way, you see that word retarded in huge text? Get used to me hearing that word and saying it to get to the truth because believe it or not the word retarded is the perfect analogy to sum up probably a city that is synonymous with F-list movies like First Man and The Adventures of Pluto Nash and anything starring Tom Cruise because let's face it he's retarded too and so was the entire crux of Scientology and its retarded founder, L. Ron Hubbard, who gladly and mercifully is in hell being raped by Satan for all eternity for his many crimes against God and, quite frankly, his many crimes against humanity. So that sums it up, doesn't it? Get used to hearing the word retarded in this shockumentary because it is going to be used a lot. And if you are a Democrat who is offended by everything that has ever been said throughout human history, tough shit, because you're going to sit through two hours of this bullshit, which, by the way, the same supporters of democracy as well as the Democrats themselves started 200 years ago. You understand me? Let's get started. Okay, we're going to call out these mainstream media retards for what they are. They are merely an extension of Hollywood, democracy, and all things selective retardation. We're going to start off with NBC, the national broadcasting company, also known as the Nitwick Bukaki conglomerate, also known as the Nutless Ball Sack Consortium. Do you know what they are? They are, and this is more true than you will ever understand, they are a bunch of nutless, broke chumps who do it for Rothschild and Rockefeller. You know, they call NBC a peacock for a reason. And not because their mascot is one either, or their logo symbolizes one. They call NBC a peacock because they piss out of their mouths and they talk out of their cock. The same way that they would be considered jackasses because day and night, non-stop, 24 hours a day, all they do is shit out of their mouths and talk out of their asses. And whether you like it or whether you don't, the fact forever remains that this analogy could not possibly be any more closer to the truth than it is. In fact, it is the truth. And whether you people see that, well, that's entirely your decision. But if you don't take what I've said seriously enough 
to make sure that what you think is relevant enough to where it would be somewhat credible, then you're going about it all wrong. Let's go now to ESPN. ESPN, the Extreme Shitposting Network. They used to be an actual sports company, but the longest time that's what they were. They didn't put politics over people like they do now and have for the last 10 years. They don't care about sports. They're a sports network, but in reality, nothing about them actually cares about sports. There may be thousands of employees that work at ESPN, but there is something that almost every single one of them have in common, and it's something that you're all very familiar with. They are retarded Democrats who put politics over people. That is why I have dubbed them the Extreme Shit Posting Network. And they do it for Rothschild because, as I've stated, they're a Rothschild Central Banking Incorporated company. Because that's what they are. Now, aren't they? Oh, by the way, you know I'm not lying about it. So what's the point in not caring enough to let that on? What's the point in not letting that on? I'll tell you, there is one. Because not caring enough to let it on is allowing yourself to continue being the problem. There's a reason why they're called the Extreme Shit Posting Network. Because every chance they get, they want to fuck the Patriots out of house and home by excluding the national anthem being played in every football game prior to kickoff and the toss-up. You know, that, that portion of the show before the kickoff where they put the team up and it's heads or tails, the team that gets to make the call either gets the offense or the defense respectively. Yeah. I didn't think you guys cared enough to let that on. But, see, that's the thing. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help all of you. Because you people, now more than ever before in history, need someone who's willing to help you regain your sanity, regain your senses, to stimulate your senses, to quote the slogan of Five Gum. How it feels to chew Five Gum. <coughs> stimulate your senses. Anyway, this is the commercial. Yes. Moving on now, we have the Clinton Nazi Network. You guys recognize them, right? Yeah, that's because they're fake news. They're the fakest of fake news. All day and night, they suck the dick of Rockefeller, and they suck the dick of Rothschild, and they blow themselves off to democracy. And they suck the dick of Obama, they suck the dick of Bill Clinton, they suck the cunt of Hillary Clinton, they suck the cunt of Chelsea Clinton. Meanwhile, they won't care enough to let on the fact that Bill Clinton is not, as shocking as this sounds, the biological father of Chelsea Clinton. Do you know who actually fathered Chelsea Clinton? I'll tell you who. Webster Hubble. And he is a felon and a war criminal serving a life sentence in jail for selling the people down the drain when he knew it was bullshit. But the people at CNN, they're all about political correctness. 
because they don't give a shit about you. They don't care about you. They fuck you high and dry. And they kill all your brain cells to promote a democratic agenda that, quite frankly, was never supposed to have existed in the first place. And do you know why? Because that same democratic fascist agenda is also the agenda of the Rothschild dynasty, of the United Nations, of Iran, of the dynasty of Rockefeller, of the House of Clinton, hence the Clinton Nazi network, and the ongoing effort by one Lucifer Satanas Mephistopheles to completely render the entirety of the human culture and race absolutely That's the entire existence of CNN in a nutshell. And you people, as much as you're offended by that, know it to be the truth because it is. I can't make it any clearer than that. Or maybe I can with this one. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. And speaking of which, the entirety of the Columbia Broadcasting System is filled beyond the brim with 24 hours a day worth of Clinton's bullshit. So, if you happen to be gullible enough to buy into any of their communist Bavarian socialism, which is what they stand for, by the way, not literally, but it's might as well what they would should fucking stand for, then you're even dumber than they are if not just as dumb. And that in of itself is unfathomably difficult to achieve. Do you know how dumb you would have to be to buy into a Clinton's bullshit? Into a Cavendish's bullshit? Into a communist Bavarian socialist agenda? By the way, CBS is also known as the cocksucking Bavarian synchronicity. They're also known as the Kagnacker Bukaki shitbuck. They're also known as selective retardation. They're also known as democracy, or an extension thereof. But you people already know that. Of course, the only shows that they have ever had on there that ever had any credibility to it are Price is Right, The Big Bang Theory, Let's Make a Deal, and Two and a Half Men. And of those four shows, guess which two were still around? The game shows. The price is right, and let's make a deal. And I know I'm just foreshadowing here, but the Big Bang Theory is going to be canceled after this coming season, which is going to start this coming Saturday. But you already knew that, didn't you? Because you don't fucking listen to logic. You need to listen to logic. It will save your life. Now, on to another one. The American Broadcasting Company. Also known as a group of alcoholic buttcracks. Also known as 
assholes but fucking conservatives. Also known as absolute bullcrap. The American Broadcasting Company, which has been around for about 75 years by this point as of me recording, is the illegitimate father of the Clinton Nazi Network, except ABC is a thousand times less sober and a million times dumber. And you know why, don't you? You know why, right? I'll tell you, just in case you want it confirmed. Because for the last 22 years, they have had this masturbatory Democrat suck-up show, which is anything but a show. It's called The View. It's hosted by a woman whose name is Joy Behar, but is anything but full of joy. There's a lot of hate in Joy's face. Every time you see her ugly mug and that of Whoopi Goldberg praising our democracy, all your brain cells die inside that tiny, tiny brain. So, if you want your mind to commit seppuku, Watch anything other than see Harvey's Family Feud. Because believe it or not, Family Feud being hosted by Steve Harvey is the best thing to ever happen to ABC. And whether you want to believe me or whether you want to choose not to believe me, you know it to be a fact. Because quite frankly, it is. Now isn't it? And I know you people don't care to let it on, but the fact of the matter still remains. It is an irreversible, unfathomably true, unalienable fact of life. Because everything else that they have, other than Steve Harvey's family feud, or celebrity family feud for that matter, is nothing more than masturbatory, democratic trash. Moving on. YouTube. I'll get to that as far as it originated and what it has in common with a few other sites that you're aware of very, very soon. And it might come sooner than you think. See... There is a post made by a user whose said post has since been deleted. And there are people who commented on it whose posts have been deleted. And I know I covered this in an episode of Spot the Liberal some time back. By the way, if you like my stuff, don't forget to kill that like button. Meaning click it as many times as you want. Unfortunately, you can only click it once to officially like it, and twice to unlike it. I don't know. Just click it an odd-numbered amount of times, and you'll still like it. Right? And that's assuming you haven't liked it before. Because you, you, you click on the like button once to like it. You click on it twice to undo the like. Right? But anyway, YouTube is a shithole. The YouTube celebrity culture is a cancer. There are people who feel that Ethan from Ace3A3 got caught up in YouTube celebrity bullshit, which is why his videos suck. Now, see, now that I think about it, CBS also stands for celebrity bullshit. Going back on topic. 99% of YouTube's celebrities are a bunch of talentless retards who only make low-effort circle jerk and clickbait videos. Their fans are a bunch of retarded 
regrets. Who, despite being fully grown adults, have the mentality of really, really dumb 12 year olds. Not that I have to point this out or anything, but I have to point this out because it's absolutely necessary. And perfectly justified at that. The UI is terrible. You cannot downvote a comment anymore. And YouTube has a strong liberal bias where conservative content is either demonetized or removed. Which is why I willingly choose not to monetize any of my content anymore. Because if you're a conservative who wants to make money by telling the truth, guess what? You're not allowed to do that because YouTube is run by a bunch of shitheads who turned it into a shithole. Namely Google. And three ex-PayPal employees who founded the site and would eventually turn it into the liberal bias machine that it is now. There are other comments here that have not been removed yet from people whose comments haven't been removed. See, the thing is, the thing is, in 2006, you know Google, right? In 2006, Google bought YouTube after it was private for about a little more than a year. And from there, it completely went down the toilet into the sewer of endless masturbatory garbage. Especially after Vine died. You know Vine, that, that website that people used to go to for some time, but ended up being killed by the Democratic Rothschild Rockefeller machine. And then all the big Viners moved to YouTube, including Logan and Jake Paul, the Paul brothers. However, when you use it just right, the comments section is fantastic in terms of calling out bullcrap of big studios and media organizations because their comments sections are often full of people voicing their disagreement, which is why they are often disabled. Yeah. Try and explain your way out of that one, right? Because I guarantee you, you won't be able to. It's a Yeah, I don't know if it bears mentioning at this point, but you know Hollywood, right? The great and powerful Hollywood. I know that's a take on the great and powerful Oz, based on another movie that was aired and released in theaters some eight decades before called The Wizard of Oz. Not that it means anything, but it's worth pointing out that Hollywood is one of the premier hot spots for illegal immigration, for war crimes, for people who put politics over people, and quite frankly, anyone that lives there is the problem. And I know I'm making a blanket statement, but you all know it to be true. So, it's worth pointing out that Saturday Night Live admitted in the past, and does now, that Hollywood is in fact hell. Hollywood is a real-life hell. Nick Cannon, in a TMZ interview, further confirmed this by telling people to keep your kids the hell away from Hollywood. You know, it is, it is so funny. It is so funny to me, you know. Hollywood is hell on earth because it is the only place just about in America one of the only states in America 
where you can break immigration laws from here to Kingdom Come, where you can shit all over the sidewalk, where you can give somebody all kinds of sexually transmitted diseases, such as AIDS or HIV or chlamydia, but it's also a place where it's illegal to buy a straw, much less own one. You're not allowed to have a straw in California. Because Hollywood, because Jerry Brown, because shitheads turning once great states and countries into shitholes. Speaking of Jerry Brown, February the 20th, 2018. Over the weekend of February the 20th of 2018, when nobody gave two shits enough to notice, California governor and treasonous Jerry, I've got to take a shit in my toilet bowl, Brown, except my toilet bowl is an entire state, signed a bill which outlaws teachers' ability to shoot back if they came under fire at the hands of an illegal immigrant or a terrorist of some kind at school. Only in California will people not notice someone like Jerry Brown signing such a treasonous bill in the law. And New York, too. And, by the way, I don't agree with Andrew Cuomo on anything except for the fact that America was never really that great. And he's not wrong for saying it. You know? It's just quite sad, really, because as long as America has been a nation in a modern society, in modern history, Native Americans have been silenced and killed for no reason whatsoever, even though Native Americans have been violently targeted for centuries, even though they were here thousands of years before anyone else. You know, 6,000 years they've been a part of America, and they were born here, sadly enough. But here's where my being ashamed of my ancestry comes into play. You see, as you know, I'm a Caucasian. I'm ashamed to be a Caucasian. You know why? Because considering I am of Irish and German descent, of European descent and ancestry, my ancestors were dumb enough to come here knowing that it was Native American soil, but assuming when they knew it was bullshit that no one was here before them, and then when the Native Americans were revealed to have been here centuries before they ever were, what do they do? They kill them, they rape them, they sodomize them, they murder them, they make their lives living hells. They imprison them. They enslave them. Kind of sad, isn't it? So technically, the land that many of us have been living in, this great nation, this great country of America that we've been living in, also known by Native Americans as Turtle Island, because that's essentially what this nation was before it became the United States of America, we referred to as Turtle Island. But not without a damn good reason, because there's a damn good reason behind it. Because when the Native Americans founded this nation thousands and thousands of years ago, because they were the original founding fathers, the founding fathers that we know today didn't originally found this country. No, they're referred to as the modern founding fathers. Meanwhile, the original founding fathers were in fact indigenous American Indians of Native American ancestry and descendants. 
Moving back onto the topic of Hollywood. Hollywood is hell on earth because Hollywood, as known by many other disturbingly accurate names, including, and I quote, Hollywood, Holly Hell, Peterwood, The Pit of Misery, Hell on Earth, Killa Villa, Sanctuary City West, Illegal Immigrant Central, Newborn Porno Plaza, Hollywoodland, Democratic Shithole 666, Shirley Temple's Worst Nightmare, Baby Burlesque Boulevard, Satan's Summer Home, and my personal favorite, Dr. Abby Dumas Liberal's Kakapukukikishire Funny Bar. Imagine that, right? Because California is the only state in America where it is generally accepted to have feet that smell so acridly foul that their odor can be accurate and stinky enough to kill a dinosaur from three planets away, hence the shape of the state itself, which generally resembles a very stinky sock. Smell my socks! Paul Joseph Watson, at Present Planet, points this out. Hollywood is the media. Deep State are Democrats. The resistance is academia. Soros globalists are saboteurs within their own administration. Imagine what Trump would have achieved without all of these enemies? But he's already accomplished so much. What would he accomplish without all these enemies sabotaging him with his own administration? Without any Democrats? Well, I'll tell you what he would have done. He would have passed an amendment that completely illegalized and outlawed in its entirety and all its span Democrats in all their denominations. He would have outlawed democracy because for 100 and some 90 years, for some 190 years, democracy has been nothing more than a mask behind the problem of this country that is actually fascism. Democracy is fascism. George Orwell and John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe and Shirley Temple Black and Myron Fagan have warned us about this in the past. Did we listen to them? No! Because we thought we knew better when we knew that what we were saying was bullshit. I'm telling you, man. I'm dead serious. Now, California and Hollywood in general is also known as the place where standards don't exist, a.k.a. Double Standard Central. Now, Al Capone was the most feared bootlegger of his time. He owed the IRS 215 grand. He spent 11 years in federal prison. Al Sharpton owes the equivalent of that amount in today's money, which is about four and a half million. He gets off scot free. Meanwhile, 1.2 million children are trafficked for sex. In the United States, 300,000 children are at risk. Now, let me tell you about Shirley Temple Black, one of the original babies burlesque. She was an iconic actress, well ahead of her time, whose parents, as shitty as they were, made the mistake of selling her to the Hollywood child porn scene because they wanted her to be famous. 
They wanted her to star in baby burlesque movies. Now, I know you can't pick and choose your own families, but if I were Shirley Temple Black, if I had learned this decades in advance, I would have disowned my parents a long time ago, but that's only if I were in her shoes. And she was a woman, and I'm a man, obviously. I can't obviously be a woman knowing that I was born a man. Otherwise, I'd end up like Caitlyn Jenner, formerly Bruce Jenner, before he had that sex change that turned him into Caitlyn Jenner. Also known as transgender Hollywood sex slave victim number 75,875,203. The average age of a trafficking victim is 12 years old. Let that sink in, people. The average age of a trafficking victim is not even yet old enough to be considered a teenager because when all the guns have been banned when all the words have been censored when all the history has been erased when all freedom has been taken then and only then will you get your head out of your ass long enough to discover why our right to bear arms was so high on our list of must-haves and priorities and basic bare necessities of life, to quote a song off of the Jungle Book. No, not the book by Rupert Kipling or Rudyard Kipling, but the movie that was done just after Walt Disney died. And, you know, production of that movie was done prior, just prior to Walt Disney's death. And then he died and the movie was released, not even months later, to much fanfare. Go figure. Speaking of Walt Disney, you know he was a pedophile, right? Walt Disney is what so many people in the mainstream Hollywood cinema business are, pedophiles. Very few people in Hollywood have the nuts to speak out about this. Among them, of course, is Corey Heim. He had the nuts to speak out about this. Was he shamed for it? Absolutely. Because apparently it's illegal to be on the wrong to be on the right side of history. Meanwhile, something happened on the month of September of 2001. George W. Bush, Republican President of the United States at that point, wasn't really a Republican. In reality, he was a Democrat pretending to be a Republican. Great moments in unrecorded video surveillance footage history 101. September 10th, 2001. 85 surveillance cameras failed to capture even a split second of video of Al-Qaeda under the blessing and permission of George W. Bush, who by the way was a treasonous and still is, stealing nearly $30 trillion from the Pentagon. I say that because it's trillion with a T. You know how big a trillion dollars is? If you have a trillion dollars, you're practically wealthy enough to own a great, great chunk of the world greater than even you care to understand. Sixteen years later, the Las Vegas shootings. Two thousand surveillance cameras failed to capture any part of a video of a man carrying in 47 guns, ammo, cameras, and two shooting platforms. Of course, he would go on to commit the greatest mass murder and the most notorious one in American history. That was previously held by that ISIS sympathizer who shot some 50 people at a gay nightclub 
somewhere in a shithole state somewhere in this country of America. Las Vegas and Washington, D.C. Both are sanctuary cities. Huge coincidence? Yes. Are they hiding something? Yes. But they're not hiding it very good. Because, obviously, if they were hiding it well enough, we wouldn't know about it. And who doesn't know about it by this point? Robert A. Heinlein said that the United States has become a place where entertainers and spoiled, retarded, professional athletes, is that word again, retarded, get used to it, are mistaken for people of importance. How true is that? Let me explain something to you people. If you people are retarded enough to elect Democrats into the House and Senate this November, they will let illegals in, they will let criminals out of prison, they will coddle the lazy, they will persecute Christians, just like myself, they will demonize police officers and ICE, because they're the police for illegal immigrants that need to be detained and deported. They will let boys and girls bathrooms. They will tolerate and accept radical Islam and fascism and jihadist beliefs. Basically, Obamaism. And they will advocate for the abortion of unborn people still in their mother's wombs. Which basically is murder. Fun fact. Obama holds the world record for the most children murdered, killed, eradicated from the face of the goddamn earth by a Nobel Prize winner. A Nobel Peace winner. Hashtag Obama Day. Do you remember when Obama funded and trained ISIS and then accidentally dropped and gave them a whole ton of weapons? Do you remember that? Moral of the story, real men don't buy girls. I'll give you a few examples. I'll give you a few examples. Hardy Weinstein sold his soul to Satan and got fucked in the ass by Rothschild. Is his reputation gone? Zero follow-up. Because Hollywood is a shithole. Run by faggots. Joy Bayard gets a talk show despite being a terrorist and an ISIS supporter and someone who voted for Obama twice. Is the show going to get canceled? No follow-up. Because Hollywood is a shithole. Because in shithole states like California, Washington, D.C., and New York, shaking your dick or your tits or your ass or your clitoris in front of people will get you a Presidential Medal of Freedom, a Nobel Peace Prize, or a bid or a reality show, and anything else that money can buy. But being an actual human being with morals the likes of which God himself would condone and a God-fearing mentality and a Christian mindset with a basic understanding of life will either get you demonized, it will get you killed, it will silence you, people will sit all over you for it, but only in civil states like California Washington, D.C., and New York. Because reasons. I believe you all know what they are. Now, John F. Kennedy 
the greatest Democrat who ever lived, and also the only Democrat in history, past or present, has nobody's come close to what he was able to do throughout his 1,000 days in office, before him or since his death. He said that we should have taken his word seriously to abolish all shadow governments, <coughs> democracy, <coughs> fascism, <coughs> ISIS, <coughs> Clinton Foundation, <coughs> mainstream media, secret societies, <coughs> Rothschild, Zionist usurpers, and oculists, and the Federal Reserve. And yet, what well, has it happened, despite it being over six decades since JFK's passing, that is still very much a reality in the making. And though he's been long gone for several generations, we all still have the power vested in us, because remember, we tell the government what to do, not the other way around like it supposedly has been since 1871. We all have the power vested in us by God to grab a pair of nuts and have the gall to work together to make the abolishing of all secret governments, all secret societies, all shadow governments, all Zionist usurpers and occultists in the Federal Reserve a reality. Do you understand, people? The Agenda 21 campaign mashed under the guise of sustainable development is really a blueprint for the extinction of the entire human race. There was a man named Audi Murphy who became the youngest man to participate in the Second World War. 19 years old, an orphan, supported himself by sharecropping and picking cotton. He was awarded the Medal of Honor for holding back an entire Nazi Germany army with a machine gun on his own. He did it single-handedly to lead a successful one-man counterattack while wounded and out of ammo and became the greatest decorated soldier in human history within the last 80 some years. Meanwhile, a retarded dumbass like David Hogg, not to be confused with another David Hogg who would put the liberal David Hogg to shame permanently and possibly into suicide, is 20 years old. He can't even fix himself a can of soup or a sandwich. He has PTSD from offensive words. In other words, selective retardation. He requires a safe space. He was coddled into a permanent state of immaturity and special needs would never be able to own a rifle, much less know how to use them, and has never heard of the war hero that is Audi. Go fucking figure. Go figure. By the way, there was a Hollywood actress recently who was charged with sex trafficking for a cult. She was a part of a sex trafficking cult, and she just now got caught? Why haven't they sentenced her to a lethal injection, or the boats, or escapism, or a crucifixion yet? Why haven't they given her the death sentence? Because she's a Democrat, and Democrats are protected by the liberal fascist government. Which, by the way, we were stupid enough, for the most part, to elect, despite not knowing any better. Because we choose not to know any better. Meanwhile, dumb politicians are not the only problem. 
The other problem to this is that retarded idiots will continue to vote for them even though they never had any credibility to start with and never will. Speaking of which, California sues the Trump administration over the plan to end DACA. California is bankrupt, but the politicians over there that put politics over people don't give a shit. The state of California is broke thanks to liberalism and fascism and politicians. There are no two ways around. California politicians are in Dallas despite the new ban on state employees traveling to Texas. California politicians continue to drive up the cost of living because their top cop warns employers to follow the state law on immigration, which, by the way, is illegal. The Sacramento Bee... Yeah, that's the people who came up with this hell. By the way, do Californians ever want to be part of the United States? Because last time I checked, the answer is and has always been no. Which is why I'm going to be so glad when they finally choose in 2019 to secede from the Union. Because guess what? When they secede from the Union, not only are they going to be bankrupt, despite being the sixth largest economy in the world, for some reason, but, in addition, they're not going to have America to depend upon. And not only are they going to be fucked, but they don't have an army. Because liberalism. See, back in my grandmother's time, Kids did what they were told to do in order to avoid getting their asses beat to the point in which they wouldn't be able to walk for a day or two. And there was a guy named Tacitus who said, this was an ancient philosopher from thousands of years ago, and though he's been gone for centuries and centuries, what he said has been proven to be more true with each passing day. He said thousands of years ago, the more corrupt the state, the more numerous the laws. And you wonder why people like Corey Feldman and Rose McGowan and John Cusack and Nick Canning are calling Hollywood out for the faggots that they are. You wonder why people like Brian Peck are being arrested for pedophilia and sex rings with minors. Has it become any clearer to you yet? Because if it has, then everything I'm saying, I'm saying exactly right. Because in order to accept the truth, you have to be offended by it to where you'll react to it in such a way to where you're going to say to yourself, gee, I wish I would have listened to this person earlier when he offended me and at least taken stock in what he said or at least taken seriously and not for granted what he said do you get it now people it all makes perfect sense it's logic it's common sense people and just when you thought I couldn't further confirm that for you I'm gonna now further confirm that for you in ways that you'll never be able to unsee again. By the way, Tom Cruise is a Scientologist and a Satanist. Pass it on. You know, I think it's all coming together, isn't it? Now, let me, let me explain something to you. I'm going to remind you again, assuming that I haven't reminded you before, of the 
facts that humanity is lacking in. See, there was a philosopher named Albert J. Nock. He was just like all of us, struggling, trying to make it to the next day, dying. A sufferer of the great Rothschild dynasty, of the great Weishaupt conspiracy. He said that everyone knows that the state claims and exercises the monopoly of crime, and that it makes this monopoly as strict as can be, forbidding private murder, but itself organizing murder on an unprecedented and otherwise colossal scale, punishing private theft, and instead laying scrupulous, unscrupulous hands on anything it wants, whether the property of citizen or nor alien. In other words, the state consists of double standard, two-timing hypocrites who kiss the ass of Rothschild and suck the dick of Rockefeller. They don't allow you to do what they're guilty of, but they'll allow you to do what they are not guilty of. It kind of figures itself out, doesn't it? You know, save the planet, save the children, save the pedophile, save the damn limit. You know? And I know that I probably just spat on the freaking computer, but at this point, I really couldn't care less. You know, there's a man, a man named Richard Feynman, the great philosopher that he was, and yet so vastly ignored by people who don't even know his name or what he's done to help us get to where we are. You know what he said? He said that no government has the right to decide on the truth of scientific principles. And he couldn't have possibly been any more right because everything that he said in that statement throughout his life was absolutely spot on. A man named Plato, several millennia ago, ancient philosopher, you know what he said? He said that no one is more hated than he who speaks the truth. Meaning, the most hated people in the world are also the same people that have the balls and the nuts and the gall to speak the truth on the very society that has for all their lives fucked them out of house and home. Meanwhile, in Hollywood, there are lingerie shows featuring five-year-old girls whose shithead parents sell them into the shithole that is the child sex ring, which, by the way, has been going on for almost a century now by this point. And if you people haven't figured that out yet, then I don't feel sorry for you. Meanwhile, the pictures that you see on the near top left, those photos are not edited in any way. This is reality, people. You have grown adults in Hollywood holding illegal lingerie shows featuring little women five-year-olds, specifically, who would be considered minors in any sense of the word simply because they're five years old and they're forced to model for Victoria's Secret. You know? And you wonder why Dr. Phil McGraw, as Humpty Dumpty and Hanky Panky as he is, exposed this elite pedophilia ring on live TV. You wonder why he exposed Hollywood for what they are. Because he knows what I know, and he knows what you all should know. That Hollywood is the crux of American pedophilia. Meanwhile, you've got fuckwit retarded websites like YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and Google and Alphabet Incorporated and PayPal 
and dare I say it, GoFundMe, who want to steer you away from this inevitable fact in order to provide you from and provide you with circle jerk bullshit, you know, from their so-called celebrity. See, this is why I don't want to be called a celebrity, okay? I'm a messenger of God, first and foremost, and a celebrity dead last. Because I would rather shoot myself in the mouth, Bud Dwyer style, than to ever be called a celebrity. I'll tell you why. Because celebrities, many of them, are pedophiles. Like Roseanne said earlier, MK Ultra mind control rules in Hollywood. If you cannot see that, people, you refuse to accept that as a fact, then whether you want to be called one or not, you are retarded. You are the problem. You are everything that is wrong with this world. Whether you want to see it or not, that's up to you. I'm not going to force you to decide upon something that you don't want to decide upon. I'm just giving you all the evidence evidence of which has been sourced through social media platforms like the ones that I've just described to you, including Pinterest. Because how stupid do you have to be to fund an illegal immigrant from Iran who was once, by the way, an advisor to the Obama administration, whose main leader, Barack Obama himself, was also an illegal immigrant, in his case, from Kenya. You wonder why Time nicknamed California Governor Jerry Brown the, quote, ASSHOLE OF THE YEAR! Now let me tell you about what all these companies have in common. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Google, Alphabet Incorporated, PayPal. YouTube is an American video sharing website headquartered in San Bruno, California. Twitter Incorporated is based in San Francisco, California, having more than 20 offices all over the world. Facebook is an American online social media company based in Menlo Park, California. Google is an American technology company that was founded in 1998 in the same city, Menlo Park, California. Alphabet Incorporated, supposedly the parent company of Google, which in reality it's not because technically it's more like the daughter company of Google, despite having been founded in 2015 as the parent company. Because see, people don't know what logic is anymore. Alphabet Incorporated is an American multinational conglomerate founded in 2015 as the parent company of the much older Google, when in reality it's actually the daughter company of Google, headquartered in Mountain View, California. PayPal Holdings Incorporated is an American company headquartered in San Jose, California. All six of these sites were founded by terrorist Rothschild stooges of the great Rothschild, Rockefeller, Weishaupt, Marx conspiracy, who just recently, a few years ago, came up with the brilliant idea to shadow ban constitutional Republican conservatives and Christians. You know, Robert C. Byrd was a senator, right? He was an ex-Navy captain, a university professor, a neurosurgeon extraordinaire, and handler. But, he was also 
the leader of the KKK at one point in his life, the Q Klux Klan. Stand up and be counted, show the world that you're a man. Stand up and be counted. Don't join the Q Klux Klan, because they're fucking shit. So, ex KKK leader Senator Robert C. Byrd, who was also a shield on the board of the church committee hearings on MK Ultra, has buildings named after him at the same university. This is coming from Twitter user. 89182764 aka Lulia the accidental whistleblower This older technology which supposedly Robert C Bird made consists of mind control and induced trauma Induced sleep, hypnosis, maintaining a desired level of consciousness, including radio frequency, remote mind control with light, and more light transmitting data. By the way, does anybody watching this right now, does anybody notice all the new street lamps? Because those street lamps in of themselves consist of radio frequency mind control, for the most part. And yet, this same ex-KKK leader, Robert C. Byrd, has several buildings named after him at the very university that he worked at, Marshall University. See, MK Ultra, according to this whistleblower, Lulia the accidental whistleblower is alive and well and it no longer requires breaking a child like the six scumbags who still worship Satan we take them down first, then we expose the next generation the device said to improve patient health care of which has a great deal of money invested. I mean, there are many devices like this in the pipeline, you know. There are a lot of people that would benefit from this type of technology. And yet the government tells people like you and I that we are not allowed to have radio frequency jammers in our house because the government, the same government that we, for the most part, elected, knowing that the candidates that we knew were full of shit, had no credibility whatsoever, but we elected them anyway. Why? Because we're just as dumb as they are. You know, the government you elect is the government that you deserve. I remember quite some time ago, a government not being as corrupt as the one now. There was someone on YouTube that said that the government we elect is the government we deserve. And this was quite some time back. This was recently at the same time. This was about a couple years ago. See, there are many, many people who will underestimate the power of control techniques of which there are many of. So hooray for God-given free will. Meanwhile, you must take into consideration the crux of California and Hollywood in general is the foundation of the CFR, the American equivalent to the Bavarian Illuminati, also known as Satan's Armada, also known as the Antichrist's army of brain-controlled ass-kissers. See, those who are asleep focus on the puppets. Those who are awake focus on the puppeteers, meaning the people pulling the strings of the puppets. 
by the way, Pope Francis is a faggot. Why? Nobody knows. He just is. Because he aligns himself with pedophiles who rape children of the same gender as they and children of the opposite gender as they. So it figures, doesn't it? The same people that he aligns himself with in the Vatican are also guilty of serial faggotry and pedophilia. You know, it's crazy. You know, there are stealth technologies that are ten times smaller than a human hair, that are remote controllable, that can break through human tissue, complete with antenna, reliever, and transmitter. Those nanoparticles enable non-invasive, optogenic, optogenetic, I should say, control of brain activity. There are methods and apparatuses of and for inducing desired states of consciousness. See, you people need to know about this. In terms of abstract, improved methods and apparatus for entraining human brain patterns, employing frequency following responses, FFR techniques, facilitate attainment of desired states of consciousness. In one embodiment, a plurality of electroencephalogram wavelengths, EEG. Characteristic of a given state of consciousness are combined to yield an EEG waveform, an electroencephalogram waveform, to which subjects may be susceptible more readily. In another embodiment, sleep patterns are reproduced based on observed brain powers during portions of a sleep cycle of which has observed brain patterns. Entrainment principles are applied to induce sleep, and in yet another embodiment, entrainment principles are applied in the work environment to induce and maintain a desired level of consciousness. In other words, they're trying to keep you from waking up. They're trying to keep you from awakening to the truth that is the very foundation of what we know to be the Committee of 300. It's very funny, isn't it? The Committee of... There are 300 very powerful people who supposedly have all the wealth in circulation. All the wealth in the world. Black Pope Arturo Abascal, the current Pope of the Jesuit Society, the Society of Jesus, which, by the way, promotes anything but Jesus. If anything, they're promoting Satan a hell of a lot more than they're promoting Jesus. Otherwise, they wouldn't hide behind a religion, and they'd pull the Wizard of Oz and confirm what we've suspected all along, that they're nothing more than Satanists under Christian guises. Abascal is referred to as the Black Pope. The White Pope, of course, is the one in charge of the Vatican, Pope Jorge Francis Borgoglia, as well as the dynasties of Rothschild, of Rockefeller, of Clinton, of Soros, of Cavendish, of De Medici, of Warburg, of the Zuckerberg, of the Dorsey, of the Bush and Carter and Obama dynasties, the Vatican, the Jesuits, which I mentioned earlier, Jehovah's Witnesses, which if you haven't figured out by now, are absolute frauds who hide behind a Christian religion to mask the fact that they're actually promoting a Luciferian agenda, namely Agenda 21. And the entire deep state as well. I mean, people, if you haven't figured that out yet, you need to get a damn clue. Because it's time. 
I mean, does it need to be pointed out any further? By the way, by the way, there are people in this world, as crazy as it sounds, people like Antoine Smalls, who suffer from transracial identity disorder, or TID, we'll just call it retardation. People who were born black, but identify as being white. Or rather, identify themselves as being white, even though they were born black. A common sufferer of transracial identity disorder is a man named Colin Kaepernick. So it figures, doesn't it? See, this is why I got suspended from Twitter. Because I have the nuts to speak the truth on the very crux of everything that has ever defiled humanity. Jack Dorsey, we know that you're in bed with Mark Zuckerberg, metaphorically. Your crusade against us has failed countless times because the moment you chose to start shadow banning the same constitutional Republican fan base that for 12 years has helped you get to this point in your life, the moment you started this shadow banning campaign is the moment your website, Twitter, became the next MySpace. And believe me, when good old Donald Trump sees that your website is nothing more than a scam, he's going to get the hell out of there. And millions and millions of your followers are going to follow suit as well, as well as the people who are part of this site. And then it will have to become the next MySpace and essentially go into bankruptcy more times than say, J.G. Wentworth, who, by the way, are not lawyers. They are frauds pretending to be lawyers. And you're just as bad as they are. Now, aren't you, Jack Dorsey? Aren't you, Mark Zuckerberg? By the way, speaking of, Mark Zuckerberg... You know, it's, it's so funny. Mark Zuckerberg, right? He... You know, this guy was nearly killed by ISIS because of how much of a fuckwit he is. It's so funny, right? You know, it's so funny. You know, Deborah G. Flynn at Dealer Dev One said in her post that Robert De Niro, another member of Hollywood royalty, was discovered using the services of an internal source of which you probably already know of, a prostitution ring. But this one has an even darker underbelly because the girls that he employed for sex were teenagers. They were minors, aged 15 years of age. Willie Smythe at Willie Smith 38. And I don't know if I said that right, but to hell with it. He said, yep, your grand uncle's Irish child a sex abuse ring that controls Hollywood, Washington, D.C., and the world without saying the demons involved. Alex Jones has made the connection anyway. Good luck at all this. User Chase at the Rave Chase, or the Raw Chase, or whatever the hell it's called. He said that a worldwide child sex trafficking ring perpetrated and financed by Hollywood, the Catholic Church, and the American Democratic Party involved terrorists to crop and terrorist attacks perpetrated by the Democratic Party, and they've gotten away with it all in hindsight. By the way, 
about that guy named Antoine Smalls who identifies himself as 35-year-old white man Harrison Booth. Buddy, I respect you, but you're not white. And as much as I respect you, with all respects you and given, you probably support Sadiq Khan, don't you? You're probably in line with Sadiq Khan, right? You're just filling his pockets, right? That's what I thought. Bottom line, the fact of the matter is simple enough. The reason why John McCain died is pretty simple. He didn't listen to his brain. His brain gave him every chance to back out of the attempt to become a senator. And then he had 40 years after that to stop putting politics over people. And when he wouldn't, his brain said, Okay, you know what? You're not listening to me, so I'm going to kill you from inside your head. And you're going to die of a broken brain. Sure enough, that's what happened. He died of glioblastoma, also known as brain cancer. Also known as democracy. Also known as selective retardation. I'm sorry to say it, John McCain. I know you've been dead for a couple of months, but you're a sorry piece of shit. You voted for illegal immigrants who should have never fucking been involved in politics in the first place, and you claim to have been a Republican even though you were actually, wink, wink, a Democrat. And you wanted to run against Barack Obama just so you could get the publicity. Meanwhile, you misspelled your first name on the 2008 ballot, which confirmed your loss to Barack Obama. So you probably were suffering from brain cancer about a decade prior to your diagnosis, officially. And maybe long before that. But it all comes together, does it? CIA Certain ignorance that she By the way, Jack Dorsey I heard you're anti-military now I heard you're anti-military the hell's up with that? Right? And so I ask again It all comes together, doesn't it? Now some time ago, I posted on my Facebook my reasons for agreeing with a rabbi on the topic of fish love. I said in that particular Facebook post, As hard as it is to believe, Rabbi Tversky is right. Too many people would rather love themselves than something in someone else for whom the self-lovers would allow themselves to love them themselves. Therefore, they end up choosing to marry such someone without actually giving enough of themselves to those whom they marry from that point on. Loosely translated, I mean, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Now, there's a guy, of course, the aforementioned Rabbi Dr. Abraham Joshua Chorsky, who further proves why I agree with him. So he says in a video that he posted to Facebook, he says, Young man, why did you eat the fish? The old man asked him. The young man says, Because I love fish. The old man responds by saying, Oh, you love the fish, that's why you took it out of the water and killed and boiled it. Don't tell me you love the fish, he said to the young man. You love yourself because the fish tastes good to you. Therefore, you took it out of the water and killed it and boiled it. Rabbi Dr. Abraham Joshua Tversky goes on to say that most of what is love is actually fish love. And so, he gives another example. A young couple falls in love, a man and a woman. What does that mean? He asks. 
And then he answers the question by saying that it means that he saw in this woman someone who he felt could provide him with all of his physical and emotional needs, and she felt in this man somebody she feels she can write to. The phrase, that was love. But, each one is looking out for their own needs, not the needs of one another. So it's not love for the other. The other person becomes a vehicle for their lover's gratification. And so he says again, too much of what is called love is fish love. He goes on to say that an external love is not what we're going to get, but what we're going to give. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. Do you people have any legitimate idea how truthful that really is? Now, I want you to think about that. Because, you know, everyone in Hollywood just about are the exact definition of fish love. Which further proves, at least in my own mind, and in probably many of your minds, that Hollywood is completely out of ideas, and has been for at least the last decade or two. And you know, it's, it's so sad that Hollywood has ran out of ideas, because you think... Look at all these posters that you see featuring human eyes or photoshopped human eyes. Do you know how similar those posters look? Do you have any idea how similar they are? That's because the posters of all the movies that feature these human eyes within said posters all indicate in themselves that the particular movies are basically saying the exact same thing. I'll give you another example. The sky and the sea theme, right? The sky and sea theme of some sort. That's been overdone just as much. You know, with Finding Nemo, with Home, with... with, Because, you know, all those posters all have the same color scheme, the same kind of background, just about... So just based on the posters alone, you would assume that the movies with the exact congruent posters of similar texture and similar look all basically say the same thing, right? Right. Hollywood in of itself is a cliché. On top of a cliché, of an endless array of cliches on top of cliches within an array of cliches. Which, as I've said earlier, proves that Hollywood is completely out of ideas and have been out of ideas since at least the early to mid 2000s. Which explains, at least in pretty damning detail, why California is bankrupt because they were led to the slaughter by a Democrat whose name insists that he's a shit-faced dementia sufferer with Alzheimer's and a pretty bad case of blabbering asshole shitting mouth. You know the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, right? 
well, this guy is a blabbering asshole with a shitting mouth. And I know that you guys might have seen this before, but I'm going to point it out once again. Because you people have very short attention spans, and you choose not to remember anything, so I'm going to point this out to you again. If you haven't seen this before, you're in for some fucking luck. Now, J.P. Morgan is obviously an extension of Nazi Germany. Because in the 1930s and 40s, the American banks J.P. Morgan and what is now a part of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank invested deeply and dearly and heavily in Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany so that Hitler and the Third Reich could remain in power. They released a document in 2013 in which they outlined what they think is wrong with Europe, even though what they think is wrong with Europe is actually, in reality, everything that is right with Europe. What they claim to be wrong with Europe is, first of all, strong legislators, or weak executives as they put it, which is bullshit because the strong legislators are surrounding the things about that are keeping Europe somewhat structured and somewhat stable. Local and regional representation in, representation in politics, too many constitutional labor rights, too many rights to protest, too much democracy, too much consensus building in politics, because European democracy is much different than that of America. It's not fascism like it is here in America. So basically they conclude, NOT ENOUGH FASCISM! It's pretty simple, isn't it? An oligarchy. An oligarchy is the liberty of a democracy that is not safe if the people tolerate the growth of private power to a point where it comes stronger than the democratic state in of itself, which turns democracy into fascism, which is the ownership of a government by an individual or a group. Case in point, Rothschild and Dynasty, Rockefeller and Dynasty, the Clinton and Obama foundations. See, this is why, this is why we're the dumbest nation on earth. Because we constantly have to remind ourselves of this every single day when we know we could have just as easily remembered it far in advance. You see, George Orwell, real name Eric Arthur Blair, is the greatest philosopher of the last seven decades simply because he came up with this statement, and I quote, It is futile to be anti-fascist while attempting to preserve capitalism because fascism is only a development of capitalism. And the mildest democracy, so-called, is liable to turn into fascism. Case in point, California. Case in point, New York. Case in point, Washington, D.C. Do you understand now? A good example of this would be, as dare as I, as sad as it is for me to say it, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And I know you're probably going to get on my case because he was a man who was confined to a wheelchair as a result of his polio. But this guy was a fascist. Not just a Democrat, but a fascist Democrat. And we were stupid enough to elect him to four terms. 
when the precedent of two terms had previously been established by George Washington, the first president of the United States, and it took 32 presidents to come in the form of Franklin Delano Roosevelt to completely break that trend. By the way, this was the same man that forced us into World War II by colluding with China to order the Japanese to execute the bombing of Pearl Harbor. And by the way, democracy has a very, very rich history of collusion. I don't think I need to tell you that because you already know, but since you choose not to know, I have to remind you of it constantly through my various web shows online and through various different techniques. Techniques of which you people have to understand in order to see it for what it is. You understand? I mean... Okay, I'll give you another example. You see, there was a guy, a sellout, named Paul Ryan, who claimed to be a Republican, but in reality was nothing more than a jackass, a Democrat, and fascist, under the guise of Republicanism. Meaning he used Republicanism as a crutch, which in turn automatically made him a Democratic fascist. He proposed raising the retirement age to 70, and yet retired two years short of his 48th birthday with a full government pension. You know how Jesus Christ had 12 disciples, right? Turns out Satan has 12 disciples too. And they rule the entire financial system of our world. And they're all Jews. The difference, however, is that they are Luciferian Jews. They are Satanic Jews. They are Luciferian Jews who give all Jews a bad name. Meanwhile, the Messianic Jews, like Dr. Rabbi Abraham Tversky, actually care about the rest of humanity. And meanwhile, Rothschild, Rockefeller, Warburg, Kissinger, Soros, Volker, Summers, Blankfein, and Bernanke all give people like Tversky a terrible, terrible name. Why? Because they rule the world, and Rabbi Dr. Abraham Tversky does it. So they think they can use that as a means to be satanic while portraying themselves as Jews at the same time. Maybe that's why Hollywood is a socialist hellhole. You see, Meryl Streep falsely accused Trump of mocking a disabled person, but refused to mention the disabled people who were kidnapped and tortured by Hillary Clinton supporters. In fact, she's no better than Kathy Griffin posting a picture of herself mocking Trump by pretending to hold his decapitated head in the air. Ironically, that would be a metaphor of what Kathy Griffin would do to her career, which is basically beheaded, so to speak. Do you people understand now? Do you get it? You people vote Democrat, not realizing that you'll become the problem by voting Democrat. See, the government USA is the best Zionist puppet of the Luciferian plans in the Middle East and in the entire world. So, 
it's not just a Jew world order, it's also a Luciferian Jew world order. And you wonder how bad a name that gives the Messianic Jew or the Judean Christian. What kind of name does that give people like that? Especially when they're the ones that are trying to worship God. Meanwhile, the twelve people that rule every part of their lives are also Jews, but also Luciferians who hide under the mask of the Jewish faith. Which is ironic, isn't it? Considering Joel Osteen is one of those Luciferian Jews who has an estimated net worth of $40 million, living in a $10.5 million, 17,000 square foot mansion, who closed the doors of his over 600,000 square foot mega church that doesn't pay taxes at all when Hurricane Harvey victims needed his help most of all. What does that tell you about Joel Osteen? I'll tell you what that tells you. He's a fraud. He's a Ponzi schemer. A supreme bullshitter of the worst kind. So if you want the truth, here it is. Your air is toxic. Your food is poison. Your money is worthless. Your water is contaminated. Your politicians are criminals and war felons. Your police are gang members. Your soldiers are pawns of the Luciferian chess game known as the Jew World Order, also known as the Luciferian World Order, or the New World Order for short. Your government creates terrorists, and your media is conditioning all of you to retardedly and blindly accept it all as being what they would call normal, which it isn't as much as it is retarded, as much as it is stupid. Do you get it? I mean, it should be pretty straightforward, right? Right. And meanwhile, you've got actual victims of Auschwitz who come up with very historically accurate statements, albeit very damning ones at the same time. Like this this guy, Eric Zulnow, for this guy, Ernst Zulnow, for example. Why don't I call him Eric? But Ernst Zulnow says that the theater in Auschwitz that he was used by the inmates before the plays were contained a stage and musical instruments. Felderer decided to investigate the large building after an Auschwitz tour guide told him that the building was unimportant and only used by the Germans to put garbage into it. Museum officials Piper and Scheck later, later confirmed to Felderer that the building was used as a means to be a theater during the Second World War, which kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? It all comes together, right? Kind of reminds you of what Martin Luther said. And this guy was a Protestant who actually called out the lies of the Catholic Church, and this guy had a potty mouth, kind of like how many people do nowadays. He said that I cannot and will not recant anything for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. Amen. He said that some 500 years ago, and so 500 years after he says it, I'm going to say it now. I cannot and will not recant anything for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand, I can do no other, so help me God. Amen.
right? And you wonder why Hollywood's box office sales are the worst they've ever been and at the same time are worth less than Venezuela as a whole. I'll tell you why. Because they're selectively retarded, pedophilia-driven, scumbag criminals. Which is just about all that we need to know about that, right? Right. Let's continue with this, shall we? And so, I'm going to ask you one more time. Do you get it now? Do you get it now? Hollywood is a shithole run by shithead pedophiles running a nearly century-old porn ring involving toddlers, babies, and minors, and elderly people, and all that vote for them are enablers of this porn ring. That's kind of like looking at yourself in the mirror, isn't it? I'm going to tell you exactly what needs to be said. Abandon Hollywood, boycott all of their material, except for the material not produced that came out of their anus hole, that came out of their shithole, so to speak meaning the conservative material from the victims of the porn ring that is Hollywood. And by the way, I don't know if you want to point this out or not, but if nobody else is going to point this out, I will. The point is, and I say this in plain English, I am not deceiving anybody, I am speaking the truth. You have for over 90 years bought into a lie that has not only raped you but that of your entire family and all the people that you relate to. The Harvey Weinsteins, the Jeff Blakes, the Jerry Browns, all demonizing the Shirley Temple Blacks and the Corey Feldmans of Hollywood and all of California with demon eyes, no less. The perpetrators are demonizing the victims and demonizing them even though they themselves have demon eyes. Does it not come together now, people? You know, George Orwell once said that telling the truth would be a revolutionary act. Well, this by far is a revolutionary act. And a damn revolutionary one at that. A life-changing one. A history-changing one. And people, I know I don't really give much of a damn about stuff like this. The only reason why I care enough to point it out is because I'm trying to save people from a selectively retarded suicide. You people are believing in a bunch of people who are guiding you on a suicide mission. You people are being brainwashed and led to the slaughter by the same people who raped your favorite Hollywood actors and actresses all throughout their lives. And with that, I have made my point perfectly clear, and as crystal as a character off of Steven Universe, and about as crystal clear as the gems you would play with on Bejeweled when you're trying to match three or more gems together to create a chain. You know, Bejeweled, right? The long-running, nearly 20-year-old franchise of games 
for the computer? Yeah, that would you like. Anyhow, I have been Kevin the Skull Anderson, actual human being, and very, very, very likely the future president of the United States of America. Because that is my goal now, to run on the Republican ticket of the presidential election and debate. And I, with the help of you, will become President of the United States in 2040. With your guidance and your feedback and your help. I could just as easily do this on my own, but I know that I would fail. So do not start a GoFundMe for me. Do not start donating to me. Because, as you know, I do this at absolutely zero cost, and I ask you for no monetary funds whatsoever. Do you understand? Do you get it? And with that, I shall conclude this shockumentary. Thank you for watching, and may God save us all. Remember, if you want my permission to download this video, message me on any of my social media channels and ask for it, and I'll give you my IK. And above all else, don't be a jackass. Please, be real. Don't steal.